Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to go over five worked examples covering how to combine uncertainties for a calculation. If you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you'll be able to apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get going. Question 1 says three packages have to be added to the payload of a space shuttle. Their masses have been measured as follows. So we've got masses M1, M2 and M3 with their values of mass plus or minus their uncertainties in kilograms. And it says calculate the total mass to be added and the uncertainty in the total. So if we find the total mass first of all, all we do is we add up all our values on the left hand side there and we get an answer of 515 kilograms. Now to find the total uncertainty in the mass we have this thing here and you'll notice this little triangle symbol this just means uncertainty in, so the uncertainty in the mass, uncertainty in M. So the uncertainty in the mass is equal to the square root of the uncertainty in mass M1 squared plus the uncertainty in mass M2 squared plus the uncertainty in mass M3 squared, which is equal to the square root of the 1 squared plus the 2 squared plus the 1 squared which is equal to plus or minus 2 kilograms, if you state it to one significant figure. Writing this down as an absolute uncertainty, we have M equals 515 plus or minus 2 kilograms. Question 2 says, when using a travelling microscope, the following measurements are made. So we're given two readings in millimetres, so we've got 112.1 plus or minus 0.2 millimetres and 114.5 plus or minus 0.2 millimetres. So we've got the same uncertainties there. Then says, calculate for part A the percentage uncertainty in the sum of these readings. And part B asks us to find the percentage uncertainty in the difference of these readings. So the first thing we need to realise is that the uncertainty in the sum and difference is found in the same way. So remember, it doesn't matter if you're adding two quantities together or taking away two quantities, the uncertainty in both is going to be found in the same way. And the way we do it is we take our values and we square them and we add them together under the square root. So the uncertainty in the sum of the readings L1 plus L2 is equal to the square root of the uncertainty in L1 squared plus the uncertainty in L2 squared. So we've got these two values up here. So this is equal to the square root of 0.2 squared plus 0.2 squared, which gives us an answer of plus or minus 0.3 millimetres, stated to one significant figure. Now to find the percentage uncertainty in the sum, we have the percentage uncertainty in the sum of the readings is equal to the uncertainty in the sum of L1 plus L2 divided by L1 plus L2 itself times by 100. So this gives us 0.3 from our answer there divided by 226.6. So that is the value we get when we add our two lengths together there. And times it by 100, this gives us plus or minus 0.1%. Part B says calculate the percentage uncertainty in the difference of these readings. So remember we said that the way we calculate the uncertainty in the sum is the same as the way we calculate the uncertainty in the difference. So we've already done that work. So we know that the uncertainty in the difference of L1 minus L2 should be equal to plus or minus 0.3 millimetres. And that's from part A. We can then find the percentage uncertainty in the difference of L1 minus L2, which is equal to the uncertainty in L1 minus L2 divided by L1 minus L2 itself times by 100, which is equal to our 0.3 from there, divided by 2.4, so that's what we get if we subtract our two lengths, times 100, which gives us plus or minus 13%. So that's a huge uncertainty compared to the uncertainty in the sum of the readings. Question 3 says, a Young's double slit experiment is set up as shown below, creating a set of interference fringes on a screen. So you might recognise something like this from the interference section of the higher course, and it says the following measurements are recorded. So the double slit separation is 0.25 plus or minus 0.01 millimetres. The double slit to screen separation is 3.91 plus or minus 0.01 metres. And the distance between adjacent bright fringes is 8.0 plus or minus 0.5 millimetres. It says calculate the wavelength of the laser light. Answer in the form wavelength plus or minus absolute uncertainty. So if we need to answer in this form, that means we need both the wavelength and the absolute uncertainty. So let's get the wavelength first of all, and the way we do this is using an equation that you will come across in the interference section of the advanced higher course. So I'm just going to give you that, but we're going to write down what we know from the question and give it symbols. So our wavelength is what we're trying to find. Our distance between adjacent bright fringes is 8.0 millimetres, which is the same as 8.0 times 10 to the minus 3 metres, getting rid of the prefix. Our double slit separation d is equal to 0.25 millimetres, which is the same as 0.25 times 10 to the minus 3 metres. And lastly, our double slit to screen separation, capital D, is equal to 3.91 metres. 
So putting this all into this equation here, which is delta x equals lambda d over d. Now notice that this is not an uncertainty in x, it's just the symbol that we give to the separation between adjacent fringes. So this is equal to lambda d divided by d, and rearranging for lambda, we have delta x times d divided by capital D, which when plugging in the numbers gives us 8.0 times 10 to the minus 3 times 0 0.25 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 3.91 gives a final answer 5.1 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. The next thing we want to do is use percentage uncertainties to find the uncertainty in the wavelength lambda. So the way we do this is we need to find the percentage uncertainties in all of these other quantities and then do a combination uncertainty. So our percentage uncertainty in delta x, so notice I'm using two deltas here, so quite confusing, um, but we've got the uncertainty in delta x. So the uncertainty in delta x is equal to our uncertainty in delta x divided by delta x itself, so that was 0 0.5 divided by 8.0 times 100 gives us plus or minus 6.25%. Notice that I've just kept my values both in millimetres because they're just going to cancel out when you do the division. The next one is the percentage uncertainty in d, which is equal to the uncertainty in d divided by d itself, which is 0 0.01 over 0 0.25 times 100, which is equal to plus or minus 4%. And lastly, our percentage uncertainty in capital D is equal to the uncertainty in capital D divided by D itself, which is 3.91 times 100, which is equal to plus or minus 0.3%. Now what we can then do is ignore this uncertainty because it's actually less than one third of the two uncertainties that we've just calculated. So to find our total uncertainty in the wavelength then, we've got the percentage uncertainty in the wavelength is equal to the square root of the percentage uncertainty in delta x squared plus the percentage uncertainty of d squared, which is equal to the square root of 6.25 squared plus 4 squared, which is equal to plus or minus 7.4%. Now we have our percentage uncertainty, but that's not really useful to finish with, so we need to then convert back to an absolute uncertainty. So if we do that, we take 7.4% of the wavelength, which is equal to 7.4% of our value of lambda, which is 5.1 times 10 to the minus 7 that we calculated, and this is equal to 0 0.074 times 5.1 times 10 to the minus 7, which is plus or minus 4 times 10 to the minus 8 meters, stating it to one significant figure. Writing this down now in absolute form, we have our wavelength is equal to 5.1 times 10 to the minus 7 plus or minus 4 times 10 to the minus 8 meters. Question 4 now says a measurement of time is given in absolute form as t equals 2.8 plus or minus 0.1 seconds. Find the uncertainty in t squared. So to do this we need to remember our relationship for the uncertainty in a value raised to a power. And remember we said in the theory video that we're usually going to use percentage uncertainties to make things easier for us. So using percentage uncertainties to find the uncertainty in t squared, we have the percentage uncertainty in t squared is equal to the power, which is 2, times the uncertainty in t over t itself, which is 0 0.1 over 2.8 times 100, gives us plus or minus 7.2%. Now converting back to an absolute uncertainty, we take 7.2% of the t squared, which is 7.2% of 2.8 squared, which is the same as 0 0.072 times 7.8, which gives us plus or minus 0 0.6 seconds. That's stated to one significant figure. Writing this down as a final answer plus or minus the uncertainty in absolute form, we have t squared equals 7.8 plus or minus 0 0.6 seconds. Lastly, question 5 says the radius of a sphere is measured to be 1.2 plus or minus 0 0.1 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. Calculate the volume of the sphere, quoting the uncertainty in your answer. So our value for the radius will be 1.2 times 10 to the minus 2 meters, and our uncertainty will be 0 0.1 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. So the first thing we need to do is remember how to calculate the volume of a sphere. So remember that's going to be given by the relationship v equals 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So if we write down what we know first of all, our volume is what we're trying to find. The radius is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 2 meters from the question, and substituting these into v equals 4 over 3 pi r cubed, we have 4 over 3 times pi times our 1.2 times 10 to the minus 2 cubed, which gives an answer of 7.2 times 10 to the minus 6 meters cubed. If we then want to find the uncertainty in our volume, we need to consider the uncertainty in our other values. Now, because the pi and the 4 over 3 are just constants, they're just numbers, but the radius is the thing that will have an uncertainty in this case. So because we've used radius cubed, we need to find the percentage uncertainty in the radius cubed. So this is equal to the power of 3 times the uncertainty in the radius divided by the radius itself, which is 0 0.1 divided by 1.2, just from the brackets up here, 
times 100 is equal to plus or minus 25%. And notice in this case, I've not put in the times 10 to the minus twos because they would just cancel out on the top and bottom. Notice as well that plus or minus 25% is a huge uncertainty. Now we convert back to an absolute uncertainty in our volume. And because this is the only thing that's gonna have an uncertainty in our volume, then our volume is gonna have an uncertainty of plus or minus 25% as well. So we take 25% of the volume, which is equal to 25% of 7.2 times 10 to the minus 6 that we calculated earlier, which is equal to 0 0.25 times 7.2 times 10 to the minus 6, which gives an answer of plus or minus 1.8 times 10 to the minus 6 meters cubed. That's stated to two significant figures this time, and if we then wanted to write our volume plus or minus the uncertainty in absolute form, we have V equals 7.2 times 10 to the minus 6, plus or minus 1.8 times 10 to the minus 6 meters cubed. That's all for now, folks. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.